again and welcome to my workshop. So today this is the second uh, in this series showing you the very beginnings of uh, wood turning and uh, today we're going to turn uh, this lovely bit of um, blackwood actually, Australian blackwood. It's fairly hard wood. Um, this has been in my shop for years so it's really dried out. Um, um, I wouldn't advise um, new starters to, for instance, go and get a beautiful log like this, cut a piece off and um, start turning it. Not straight away anyway. We will get to that. So this is a piece of um, planking actually that's just been cut off and put in a bandsaw and um, cut to a rough circular shape. Um, you don't necessarily, you know, need to use a, a bandsaw. You can, you can use a handsaw if you want to, but um, you know that, that's entirely up to you. So what we're going to do, uh, we're not going to use a spur drive. We're going to use um, first of all a face plate. So we're going to find the center of this and uh, screw the face plate on. Um, and we're going to turn the back of the bowl first and we're going to machine a small tenon um, on the back. Actually we might do a mortise. Not sure yet. There is a difference. Um, then we're going to put the, this scroll chuck onto the lathe and I'll change these segments out to a different set of jaws and I'll show you how to mount it. Uh, mount the piece of wood onto the chuck and then we'll um, scallop the inside out. So the first job is to remove this spur drive. Now, now it's in what they call a morse taper. Now I'll show you what one of those are but I'll show you how to remove it first. With your lathe you should get a rod similar to this that just fits in through the, the back and you give it a nice bit of a tap and out it'll come. So you can see it's tapered on its shank and uh, there's a corresponding taper inside here although there is a hole all the way. Okay so I've just discovered actually there's a bit of, wor bit of worm in this so that's going to be the back of the bowl. Uh, so we're, you know we're going to be cutting that out so I think it'll be okay. And there's a little bit of a crack in here that uh, I've actually put super glue in. That must have been a few years ago because I, I can only just remember doing something about it. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the, the center of this. So what we can do is just eye this onto there now. And it's going to be it's going to be good enough. So what I'm going to do now is get some screws and screw this on. Now right from the very start of learning to use a lathe, start with the right uh, and safest practices first. Now I see a lot of wood turners out there offering this up to their their um, shaft here and switching the motor on and letting the motor wind this in. That's highly dangerous. That's asking for trouble. Don't do it. That's why there's a big knob on the end of, of here. If you are offered a lathe, if you look at my the preceding video to this, um, and I discuss the makeup of this lathe, if you are offered a lathe which does not have the items on that you see with this one, my advice is don't buy it. So <laughs> that's telling you. You'd be wasting your money. Okay. Anyway, that's tight enough. You no need to do it any tighter. Because as you start to machine it, it's turning this way, the lathe is turning this way uh, and when you present the tool to it it'll actually naturally tighten up. 
So, um, and uh, you know, that you should have a su su supplied a spanner with it to be able to undo it. Okay, so we have our first piece of material for our first very simple bowl mounted in our lay. So now what we're going to do, the first job we're going to do is we're going to make it a round cylinder because it is it's a bit lumpy as you can see but uh, it's better than having a square square piece of plank on here it's uh, a lot better to to round, round the corners off first gives you a lot less work and saves you a lot of time so I'll just go and get geared up and we'll, when I come back we'll We'll start doing the turning. Okay, so we've got the lathe set on the slowest setting, and we've got the speed turned right back. So it's going to start up. It, I think it's about a two-second delay after you uh, press the on switch. That the motor will actually start up, and we're going to get a spindle gouge first, which has just been sharpened, I believe. Yep, and uh, and, and that's another thing too. Um, Always keep your tools or constantly sharpen your tools. Um, you keep a nice crisp cutting edge. Oh, you can see now. Keep a nice crisp cutting edge on your your tool, and uh, life will be a lot easier for you. So okay, here we go. So we're just going to face this off now, nice and true. Um, you know, it's a bit out of out of shape, so we've got some cutting to to do to get it down. So here we go. Don't be too keen to, to push in and, and really sort of take a deep cut because you'll start the tool bouncing and uh, you'll be cutting off material where you don't want it cut off. This is very hard because it's dried out. But we'll use, a, we'll use the roughing gauge. There we go. See the difference? It's got a much broader cutting surface, so you see the shavings coming off. I'm trying not to, to let it bounce. You see the shavings coming off. A little bit. Yeah, about 800. So we turn the speed up a little bit more, depending on how the wood is cutting. Um, it actually reduces some of the bouncing of the tool. What I'm actually doing is I'm putting a little bit of pressure down on on the actual tool rest as well to make it to give some resistance to stop the tool from bouncing back out when it meets the material. Okay. It's pretty round there now. Uh, I've got a bit of a flat spot there, look. So we'll uh, I'll go, go, go down a little bit more. I don't think that crack's going to bother us. But uh, there's quite a bit of worm in this. 
Okay, we'll keep going. Actually, that's, that's, that's okay. We're going to call that good now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to face this, face this off flat and um, start to machine this round a bit and we'll uh, have a look We'll have a look at this crack, crack and see what we can do with it. Or whether decide whether it's going to be a problem to us. Okay, so what we're going to do is move this and reposition slightly below center height. And about quarter of an inch or five millimeter, six millimeter away from the surface and um, we're going to face it off a little bit. Uh, I'm going to use my bowl gauge for this, the big bowl gauge because um, I've got what this commonly known as a fingernail um, grind on this um, and what I'm going to do is present both cutting surfaces at the same time to the, the uh, face of the wood and draw it out. Now what that does, it allows me for the bottom side or the bottom, bottom cutting surface to machine some of the wood, but the top one is scraping as well and stopping the uh, bottom one digging in. Okay, so I've got both at the same time and it's sort of cutting and scraping at the same time, but it's uh, the, the top surface is stopping the um, the tool from digging in too deep uh, and so it eliminates uh, what they call catches in other words the tool catching in deep and trying to take this out of the chuck or taking a big chunk out so that's what we're going to do right now and this is a shear scraping it's what's commonly known as shear scraping something like this. So if I wanted to cut a little more, what I do is just rotate the chisel just a little bit. And the farther you rotate it around this way, uh, the angle of the cutting surface becomes more acute and it digs in for a deeper cut. The unevenness you can hear is the, the, this, the cutting edge coming into contact with this knot. Real, real tough bit of knot that is. Oh, the crack only goes as far as that. I think they're going to be okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to machine some of this around and um, see what happens. But th this is what wood turn is all, about, is all about. The wood itself will determine what the end product is going to be. You've got to be prepared to change your original idea of what you think you're going to make out of a particular piece of wood. You know, after every set of cuts, you have a look at the wood and, you know, something that will, will appear, whether it's a piece of knotted area or a split, and you have to change your mind and machine it differently. Uh, so that's what I mean by saying the wood will determine what the outcome is going to be. Okay, what I'm going to do now is mark this bowl to machine a tenon. Now, I use calipers like these, but if you do use something like this, don't put the two legs in together because uh, it'll, it'll catch and spit back out at you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to eyeball with this one 
and this one I'm going to actually put into the wood and make a mark. Now this diameter then is going to give me the correct diameter that I need to machine for my chuck to fit inside and then open out and um, capture the piece of wood like that. So turn it down and start up and I'll show you what I mean. So that you can see is too small. Out a little bit. And that's just right. That's the seat's sweet spot. So good mark. So that's now the exact area that I need to machine out. So now I'll uh, machine that out um, and I'm going to use my parting off tool and also my spindle gouge to machine. Okay, so first off is the parting off tool. So I'm going to bring it back a little bit for this. Okay. This gives me a nice square um, entry. Now for this size bowl I only want to go in about three millimeters, which is an eighth of an inch. So then I can get my spindle gauge. So I'm doing a push and a pull cut with this. So to, to, to start it off, what you can actually do is just present it to the center of the bowl there and just push in slightly, okay, and then roll it, roll the tool over and then pull it out. Got a little bit of pressure in towards the bowl as well. These are the four segments that we're going to interchange with the chuck now. And if you notice, they're angled. So what the action is, this is going to fit inside here and open out and hold the bowl or hold the material. Um, so now I have to machine this angle now inside here. So the tool to use for that is a skew because it just happens to have the right uh, grind or the right angle. So I'm going to use that and we're also going to clean this area up in here with it. So here we go. So now we have the right angle in here for those uh, jaws to grip onto. So um, now we've done that, I can now start rounding okay, this so around. Okay, so just reposition now the tool rest on this sort of front corner. Take my cravat back in. The reason I watch it wear this is to um, stop any of the shavings going on the mics. I've got a pair of mics in here. and. Um, on the last video they played up a little bit because I think they had too many shavings or something happened anyway, so. Okay, let's start to round this off. On with the face shield. 
and on with the turning. Don't be tempted to take too much off in a you know so one cutting sequence. Take your time. Let's follow it around a little bit at a time. Okay, now you notice at the end of the tool, what I make here is moving around a bit out of control. So that means the overhang of the chisel is a little bit too much. So stop the lathe. Now whenever you alter the setting of this tool post or tool rest, stop the lathe. Do not have the lathe turn in and adjust this. I see a lot of turners out there um, just unscrewing this and repositioning it up to the material. What well, lathe is still running? That's a rep recipe for disaster. Don't do it. So, okay. So let's reposition this now like this. Minimum clearance of about uh, well, five mil, but a quarter of an inch, and then it minimizes the overhang each side there. Okay, here we go. So just put a little foot on this. It'll be a wide base ball, I think, like that. Just a simple little breakfast bowl or serving bowl. Now, to get this nice and rounded, what I use is the skew. Round it all off. That was beautiful, I like that. Even that cracker is, is okay too. I don't mind that crack in there. When we start to hollow the bowl out, we'll, um, we'll do something about that crack. Look at that. I'm using the skew, just bring it up a little bit. So what we're going to do now is, as we've got the bowl here, and we can get to all the surfaces at the back, we're going to finish this bowl off with sanding. So, I normally do my sanding on the lathe. You've got to be very careful, and I've been doing this for years. Uh, so, you know, it's up to you how you do your sanding. Um, so I can't sort of recommend this to new starters. But if you do do this, very, very careful. Low RPM and sand. Okay, so I'm reasonably happy with that now. We can finish it off a bit more later. So what we're going to do now is, now this is just to hold the shaft from turning. And spanner to undo this, like that. So now we'll remove this and I'll put the chuck on 
and change the jaws. And I'll okay, so we just that. get the chuck, offer it to the thread, and that's all it is. Now I'll get the um, Allen key now that fits into these, and we'll take these segments off and we'll put the other segments on. Simply done like this. So you can see how they're, they're taken off now. And they're numbered on the back. So this is number two. So. We get number two segment. There's a, see a number on there? Number two. See the number on that one? Number two. The reason that they're numbered is because in behind you there's a big screw. Uh, or thread them that these run into and each one of these is in a, a different position in that thread okay so these are machined to suit so when these uh, when these come together onto a piece of wood they're all perfectly lined up that's what it actually means So, put that one on, Just snip him up a little, don't have to over tighten them, just nice and firm, like that. Okay, so I'll continue now changing these. It's uh, very repetitive, and uh, I'll bring you back in when I'm ready to put the piece of wood on. Okay, so now we've changed the teeth over. We can wind this in, and so you see how they how they splay out. So we're going to splay them out now into the inside of that. Gonna close them up. Off the piece of wood up. So now we're going to face it off and then hollow it out. Okay. During some of this, um, I'll probably do a little bit of fast forwarding or, or high speed photography because uh, it gets a little boring and uh, the important parts I'll, um, I'll slow the video down and so you can hear what I'm saying. So okay, so now we're just going to first of all clean this surface up uh, to make it nice and even and then um, I'll, I'll probably round this edge over and then we'll start to scallop the, the bowl out. So you can see the action now. But you start off from the centre. You can actually start from the outside as well, work your way in. But I'm, I feel happier so start in the center here, just dig in a little bit and draw it out. Don't be too thin a wall. This is my favorite method of actually uh, hollowing a bowl out, is I, I start from here somewhere and push it in. 
And this is a ball gauge, incidentally, I'm using. So here we go. Continue to hold the bowl. Don't be too keen to take too much out at any one time. A little bit at a time. So what I do is just start the cut going there, then roll the tool over to minimize the amount of cut. Just push in gently, gently. Okay, so now we're getting to the point where it's necessary for me to rotate this around. I'll move him in slightly because the, the overhang was getting a little bit much and because of the small bowl, you have got to be a little bit more careful. There we go. So I hope I can, you should be able to work here, you should be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so here we go. If I go much further, it's probably going to break. Um, so really, you know, this is a demonstration piece, and um, as a first demonstration piece, I, I think we're going to uh, leave it at that. We're just going to clean it up now. Um, I'll clean it up with a, a scraper or a finishing tool, and um, then we'll get some sandpaper and sand it. And And for a finish for, for this type of wood, um, I prefer to use um, cedar oil, actually. And what I normally do, slow speed.
and just apply some seed oil. And then again, be very careful doing this. We're working with a spinning object here. Neighbor alert in the background there. That's my 85 kilo mariner or Pyrenees mountain dog. Keeps the whole family safe. Well, that's beautiful. Look at that. I'm going to take it off and Put a bit more, soak a bit more in here. Look at that. A lot of people would have thrown that piece of wood away with all the grub holes in it, but look at it. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That knot in there as well, look. Beautiful grain on that wood. Uh, you'll see in some of the comments uh, on other pieces that I've uh, made um, that uh, they would have chucked the piece of wood out because it was rubbish. But then when they see what you can actually do if you've got patience, you know, you can turn up a beautiful, beautiful little vase like that. But someone in a market somewhere will buy it, you know, you know, I mean, you wouldn't be doing it for nothing. Um, a little bowl like that or a set of these little bowls, you know, um, you know, a set of six of these little bowls. Um, probably maybe fifty or sixty dollars. Um, I mean, this is this is really nice wood uh, as well, you know, especially with these. I mean, obviously you wouldn't put anything <laughs> liquid in here, but uh, as a presentation bowl, you know, to um, put trinkets in or whatever. Yeah, a set of these, maybe four to six of them, fifty to sixty dollars, and you can turn these out for probably, um, I mean if I was just putting this on and just turn it out, I'd probably turn it out in about um, ten to fifteen minutes, ten minutes, fairly easy, and there you go, your first bowl. So thank you for joining me, and press like, subscribe to my channel <coughs> excuse me and um, pass it on to your friends because that's how the channel grows uh, in in numbers and uh, the more views and the more likes and the more subscribers um, it enables me to to bring better and um, more videos to you so thank you for joining me and don't forget I've got two channels now uh, you can get to my second channel uh, if you go to the banner on my YouTube channel on this channel and uh, on the banner on the right hand side lower uh, you'll see there'll be a tag there to go to my second channel um, plus down below that in the um, preferred uh, um, other channels. Uh, I, you can get to my channel there. So the second one down is Con O'Neill. Uh, so you can go to his uh, YouTube page as well. Uh, plus um, below this video there's details how to go to his website and uh, if you wish to see more, or hear more of his tracks or purchase uh, one of the albums. Uh, he's a, a singer, songwriter. Um, originally from Ireland as I you could tell 
and um, yes he's going to come in and uh, perform I'm going to teach him how to use a, a lathe and uh, you know for wood turning and how to use the laser he's very interested in the laser and also uh, CNC rotors and uh, in return he's allowing me to use his uh, tracks and his music uh, on my videos so um, until next time bye for now for me again some people say they talk to me say that love is blind that worries me All I know is how I feel today And how I feel feels like this won't go away Cause I know what she wants Something deep and blue Something like a locket